Welcome back. Let's talk to Mark Oswald. He's a strategist for ADMISI. Morning to you, Mark. Um, Bank of England. I walked past Bank of England yesterday and the, um, well, they're on strike. Um, <laughs> Yes, the great irony, actually, at the press conference is that it was actually a German press uh, reporter who asked the question about, well, why, what is the reason for all, for all the, your workers striking, which was, uh, I think, quite embarrassing to a certain extent. But leaving that aside, um, uh, it wasn't exactly a very coherent message, and the message from the Bank of England for some time hasn't been particularly coherent. Um, uh, markets were hoping that there might be someone, uh, above all Andy Haldane, who might join the, the so-called hawks and vote for a rate hike. That didn't happen, and hence we had the drop in sterling. The message from the Bank of England, and I think uh, certainly the media and to some extent people in commentators in financial markets have sort of overplayed this one, is everyone focused in on the GDP forecast cuts. First of all, they were small. Yeah, 1.7 from 1.9 in the greater scheme of things is really neither here nor there. Yep. Um, secondly, people are forgetting that generally with these forecast revisions at the Bank of England, um, they're very backward looking. They're not telling us anything about the future. They're basically just <coughs> realigning their forecasts with what, we've already, what we already know. So overplaying that part is not particularly wise. Then they had this, you know, people focused in on that and thought, thought it was dovish. Um, but then you look at the actual overall tone of the press conference and the comments we had from Ben Broadbent, Deputy Governor, this morning, talking up prospects um, and saying, well, you know, we'll, we'll probably go through a rough patch very short term, but next year real wages start climbing again. Um, and you then also look at the comment that Mr Carney made, which I thought was quite telling. Um, and that was... He said, even a very, very small changes to the GDP outlook, meaning on the upside, would have implications for monetary policy. Now, I think that there's a twofold message here. One, they want to have the room to raise rates in November, um, even if they don't. They, they're just trying. To, they're also trying to lean against markets actually pricing out the chance of any rate hike, uh, any rate hike, and any time soon. They have a problem, though, because they've been shilly-shallying around with this hawkish, well, vaguely hawkish rhetoric for something like three or four years, and every time they start to warm markets up for a rate hike, they then back away. So the market reaction is understandable in the sense that, yeah, go on, keep on talking about you may hike rates. We want to actually see you walking the walk. Um, I think the other aspect to it, which is very important to understand, they would rather not see any renewed weakness in sterling, um, particularly, you know, above all against if we got a move which was also against the dollar. Obviously, it's very weak against the euro, and that weakness against the euro is going to be actually quite damaging to households, given that the UK imports roughly about 50% of its food from the euro area. So it's not actually the relative strength of the dollar that yeah. matters. It's the, the relative weakness of sterling versus the euro, which could ignite another batch higher of inflation. And if we do, as I would expect, because the bank is still forecasting uh, inflation, CPI inflation here, to peak at about 3% in October, I don't think it's going to be anything less than 3.5%, particularly if we carry on getting these utility price hikes, as we had from British Gas this week, Virgin Media, upping the cost of uh, communications. Um, you know, it could be a lot higher. And if we then got some imported food price inflation on top of that, the bank would actually be in a very awkward situation where even if growth didn't really pick up and it was basically in line with their forecast, you would see um, inflation way outside the top end of their target range of 2% plus or minus 1%. Um, and they'd probably be forced into making a, a rate hike because otherwise if they don't respond, then you could see even more sterling weakness. So they're, they're in a difficult position. Which way would you vote if you were on the Bank of England committee? I think the, the, the simple question at the moment is, was the move last year justified? And I think with hindsight, and I, I thought so at the time, it wasn't justified. So I think we're, we're, the, the smart thing to do is we're just going to remove that, not <clears throat> and therefore making a very clear signal that what they're not doing is going into a, a, a rate hike cycle, but they're just removing Correct. the accommodation that they introduced last year. Well, we've run out of time. We'll see you next Friday. Thank you very much indeed.